So I want to introduce to some and I am um, reintroduced to them with many others. My friend Bishop William Jenkins from the Overseer of Church Life Agree 
about everything, every jot and tittle of God. But we have to be with people that love Jesus. The way that we love Jesus. We didn't confuse any times. We, we spent a lot of time with those times. Of, but I'm talking, we didn't confuse times. We live in a time when people call evil good and good evil. But I'll tell you, times like today, we need to be with, we, we, we need to understand who we are. We need to understand the people who are like us. And we need to find ourselves in a regular way together with people like that and encourage one another in the Lord. To worship together, to seek God together, to be an encouragement to one another. That's what I would simply bring to you this morning. As we move forward in 2018 in these confusing times in which we live, continue to come together. Continue to encourage one another. Continue to be a support to one another. And as you are, the Lord will bless you will strengthen you. He will be your refuge and he will be your place of safety and he will bring you your strong power. He will be Lord of all and all the storms of your life. Those men, when they were beaten and when they were commanded and when they said, if you do it again, we're going to beat you again. They went to their old company. You know what they did? They prayed. Lord, behold their threatenings. But grant unto us that signs and wonders may be done in the name of thy holy child, Jesus. When the world was trying to take their faith away from them and try to silence them, they found some people of like precious faith and they prayed. And they found courage to pray for God to use them in even greater ways. So we bless you here at the worship center this morning. Come together. This is there was a reason why we passed all those churches. Because here in this house, I find people of a like person. Yeah. Brother David, would you come and receive the offering, please? Hey. No? bring the light to you. Spiritually, if they don't know you, Father, I pray that they won't walk out the door without knowing you. Amen. Father, I pray for healing in this house. Yes. Let your healing virtue flow through this yes. place. Let your kind of glory bless Father, I pray, Lord, that you would bless the givers today. Yes. Father, I don't have any word to give today. I just need you. We all need you, Lord Jesus. We need you. Not just a little bit, Lord. I need you a lot. I think there's a whole bunch of people that do. Father, we all need you in this day that we live. Father, I pray that you bless Geraldine. Let that healing flow through that woman. Father, bless her. Jesus. Father, is it? People come forward, Lord. Bless, bless the giver. In Jesus' name. Amen.
follow the directions of your ushers. There's children's ministry. You know, people come down so you can be dismissed for children's ministry. Sorry with the from the rear, come down the center aisle. Come up the side aisles. Come love in Jesus. Beautiful
we just ask that right now in this divine moment that your good news would be shared and spread all across this land. Bless your people. I ask you in Jesus' name. Speak individually to each person. Take one word and divide it into deliverable truth. We thank you and give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Can you give the Lord one more hand of praise? Please. Love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Love you, Father. Jesus last week. Yes. Amen. Somebody want to say praise the Lord. And now we want to see the process of the continued healing and, and power of God show up in the lives of his people. I'm never one who gives the adversary a whole lot of credit. Some people say, the devil is busy. Well, yeah, but my God is more busy. Yeah. He's a whole lot more effective. Yeah. So, wherever the struggles are, there's always an answer. Wherever the difficulty is, Jesus has a place of peace. So the word that we hear often, and that word simply is dis-ease. And it is simply the word ease with the prefix dis attached to it, or it means to take away our ease. And my scriptures tell me, I believe you'll find it in your Bible, that he came to heal us of every dis-ease. Yes. Hallelujah. So whatever it is, he will take away, he will remove the dis from the ease. Somebody yeah. knows what I'm talking about. He'll remove the dis from the ease and he will allow for peace to reign in our lives no matter what it is that we're going through. I want to share a brief word post-resurrection. When we come in and we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus as rightly we should. But what happens after that? That is one of the most well-attended church services in, in a year in, during that time. Mother's Day is maybe the only day on Sunday that surpasses uh, Resurrection Sunday. It's kind of interesting. But post-resurrection, what begins to happen? And what I want to share with you today individually is the relational connection post-resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to read 1 through 11, and this is the New Living Translation. I hope you don't mind. I'm still going to heaven after I read it. Amen. I know how some, some of us can be with the King James Version. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Somebody said if it was good enough for Paul, it was good enough for me. <laughs> anyway, I, <coughs> First Corinthians 15. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I pass on to you what was, the most, what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures said. He was seen by Peter. Then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. For I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. But whatever I am now, it is because God poured out his special favor upon me. And not without results. For I have worked harder than any other apostle. Yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach. For we all preach the same message you have already believed. Jesus spoke to his disciples and he told them that he was going to rise again. Mark 9, 31. It was the power and the impetus of forward movement that they needed in order to stay the course. They had a lot of things that were coming against them. But they had this remembrance that Jesus said he was going to rise on the third day. Yeah. And they had the witness now that they could continue to stand on. Jesus told the scribes and Pharisees he would tear down the temple in three days and then he would restore. John 2.19 if you're fact checking. It infuriated them. They, they could not be who will say there to tear down the temple and in three days build it back up? Blasphemous. Jesus shared with Mary, Mary and Martha that I am the resurrection and the life, John 11, 25. And with Lazarus, they experienced the resurrection before the resurrection that we celebrated last week. There was a power that they sensed and, and a knowing that then carried them throughout eternity by faith. Now we can walk in the historical framework of the resurrection. Or we can walk in some relational movement of the resurrection and declare that and make this decree that Jesus died for me. Hey, we can, we can go through all of the historical processes. We know that in, the, in this room we believe that Jesus died for our sins. Yes. But is that your personal proclamation? You see, it has to become a relational movement. 
I know I got a lot of smart people in the room today. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <Jesus is healthy. laughs> and we can go through all the processes ourselves. But let me tell you something. When the rubber meets the road, when you can't tell the good from the bad, come on, come on. when you're struggling with your own life, come on, come on. and the questions that you thought you had answered come raising up again and you don't know what to do or where to go. When you come to those moments, those places, mm -hmm. and then we find someone named Jesus yeah. in an amazing place, and I, I'm fascinated how he finds us sometimes at our very worst. I know I got some witnesses in the room today. When I, when I thought I knew what I was looking for, when I tried transcendental meditation, when I, when I went and I, I rubbed on a rock to try to find nirvana, when I, when I hugged a tree and got bark in my teeth, <laughs> All of this movement until one day when I was sitting as broken, disgusted as I could be, I heard a voice from heaven who said, get up and go to your family. And from that moment, I, I found a savior that I thought I grew up knowing. But I found I, what I grew up knowing was a, was a religious Jesus. Somebody understand what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, in the midst of my mess, I met the person called Christ, and he delivered me and set me free. See, the resurrection has to become a relational manifesto for someone. Yes. We can do all this other church stuff. All, all church stuff is not God stuff. <laughs> but when we can find a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrected one, yes. then he begins to make a way for our personal resurrection. The writing of the letter to the church of Corinth and many churches, many uh, doctrinal processes, the, church, the, the letters to the church of Corinth are letters of correction, and they do all they can to bring correction by by some some script, by some law, to say this is what you need to do. This is how you need to do things. Otherwise, you're not going to to heaven. But this was a personal letter, like like a father writing to his children and wanting to maintain what he had deeply placed in their hearts. He said, look, guys, I want you to remember the good news. I want you to remember the good news. How Jesus paid the price and the penalty for all of your sins. This is the power of life for us. You hear what I'm saying? With all of our struggles, with all the things that we find ourselves going through, the resurrection is the power of life for all of us. The resurrection decrees that death couldn't stop him, that the grave couldn't hold him, mm -hmm. and that he carried all of that for us, that we would have victory on a continual basis. The victory that now says death cannot stop you. The grave cannot hold you. You can experience through the suffering, through the suffering of the crucifixion, you can experience the power of the resurrection. <laughs> this is the power of life for us. For every believer, for every person who stands by faith in Jesus, there is a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And we can still have total victory over anything that would attempt to kill, 
steal, or destroy us. I want to hear, I want to, I want to let you know today that there is nothing that Jesus did not pay the price for you for. Yes. Amen. Come on now. I want you to hear it. There, there's a movement for you personally. And he says, I have won the victory for you. You got to get that in your heart today. Because the resurrection is a relational movement. The resurrection is something that now says to you, I can go forward in my life. The two things that Jesus desires for every one of us, and that is peace and freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Many other things. And we go through all, all the understanding of it. But, but the, those two things that he desires for all of us to have. Peace, even in the midst of a storm. And freedom. And if there's anything, come on now. If there's anything or anyone that tries to withhold that peace and freedom for you, sometimes you just got to. Kick it to the curb, baby. You got somebody to say, kick it to the curb, baby. You got to say it like me. Kick it to the curb, baby. <laughs> no, it, here's the thing. We must understand that these are, the, these are the precepts that Jesus paid the price for. Yeah. We want to often control situations, control people. We want to sometimes even control ourselves. And I don't know about you, but I found out that I can't even control me. And I sure can't control Geraldine. <laughs> but what we must see and understand is that this the the understanding of this movement was purely relational. We celebrate it religiously. We celebrate it uh, as, the, as Christians. We celebrate it as the body of Christ. But you see, it has to be a personal thing for you. You have to know that Jesus died for me. You hear that? You have, it, it, if someone can just lift your hand and just say, Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. Oh, can you lift your hand and say it again? Jesus died for me. Yes! Yes! Woo! Jesus died for me! And yeah, we can do the church thing all day long, but I know for myself He died for me! And that means that we can triumph over anything, over anyone that would attempt to bury us or place us in a tomb of despair and degradation. The, the resurrection of Jesus declares that they may kill you, they may bury you, but they better look out because you will rise again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Post-resurrection declares that because I die, you shall live. The resurrection says, because I paid the price, you don't have to pay a price. It said it decrees for you, whatever, wherever you struggle. He is saying, I took that to the grave. I took that to the cross. I took that to the grave. I took that to hell. And I walked out with the keys to death, hell, and the grave in my hand. I have the victory for you. Amen. The process of living is enshrined in the subsequent acceptance of our dying to our will and opening our heart to his will. Our choice to be buried to the cares of this world and to be resurrected with him in the newness of life. Somebody got to hear that. Sometimes our biggest struggles are not what someone else does, but it's the enemy, the enemy uh -huh. that creates more problems and issues. 
Because I want to struggle and I want to tell, I want to tell Jesus that I got this. That I know what I think. I know what I, 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 I walk with Jesus in this Eurocentric mindset that says I think, therefore I am. And then my, my mind gets all messed up and my, my thoughts get all discombobulated. And before I realize it, my thoughts, my mind, my thinking is not what's going to save me. And when I can relinquish my own thoughts, when I can relinquish my directives, when I can relinquish my will over to the will and the power of the one who paid the price for me, it's fascinating. The power, the peace, and the freedom that one can experience as a result of that. I didn't realize how free I could be until I learned how to surrender. Did you hear that? Yeah. It, it, it almost it, it almost sounds like an oxymoron. It, it creates ambivalence because I, I, I want to think that I got that. As long as I got this, then I got it. But it's the process of relinquishing my will. It's the process of surrendering that gives me freedom. Amen. Be still and know that God. This developed importance in walking in the obedience of the transcendent truth of the things of God, including baptism. And I, I think that the obedience of baptism is important in the respect of doing things the way that he explained and, and, and connecting and signifying that truth with him that I that I was alive in myself, that I died to myself. I was buried with him. And then I was raised up in the newness of life. It's fascinating to find these places of standard when we give ourselves completely over to Jesus. What is it? What's baptism about? It's about a relationship. Yeah. It's about this acknowledgement of relationship that says, I'm with Christ and Christ is with me. Yes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. We create religion out of it. We, we create denominations out of it. Uh -huh. but, but you know what it is? It's this, it's this relationship that is attached to resurrection. It's this resurrection, it's this relational place where Jesus says, now, you're right here with me. So what I want to share with you today is standing in strength post-resurrection. Okay? I, I, I want you to be able to see the relational connection that you now have. Okay? I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you're at the worship center. But let me tell you something. The worship center cannot save you. Michael Cole cannot save you. But Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus delivers. And it's awesome when you can find a place, I love what Bishop said, when you have that place of like faith, where you now begin to see Jesus for yourself. Mm -hmm. okay? And that's what we, we want, this relational connection. Part of my pastoral philosophy is to work myself out of the job. You hear what I'm saying? Part of my pastoral philosophy is to work myself out of the job. But those who come in, they don't know exactly where to do, what to do or where to go. And they come and they and we pray together and we open the scriptures together. And, that, and before you know it, they begin to they begin to pray. They begin to see God for themselves. They begin to open up their hearts. And they begin to hear Christ for themselves. And I just move on to the next one. Amen. I'm, I'm just trying to work myself out of a job. 
You hear what I'm, you understand what I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to keep all y'all. I'm glad you're here. And I want you to come back. But the purpose is that we all are built up in the likeness of Christ to assist those who are hurting, crying, silent, and dying out there on the street so that they will know Christ. Okay, what is it about? It's, a, it's about a relational connection post-resurrection. Okay, I know Jesus for myself. And you know what? I know that he died for me. And he did not just die for me. He was resurrected for me. Amen. And that's where the change continues to grow and come from. So my heart, my encouragement to you is to see Jesus post-resurrection. To see him in relational connection. That there will be a change in your heart and in your life to know Jesus for yourself. To know Jesus for yourself. Let's pray. Father, just right now, here in this room, I ask that you would sweep through and touch each person. I ask you, Lord, to create a relational connection with each person. That they'll know you post-resurrection. That they'll know you by the power of your resurrection. Bless them right now. Let that relationship stir up within them. Lord, if they don't know you right now, will you help them get to know you? Help us to help them get to know you. I ask you for change like you've done for so many of us right here in this room. Increase our relationship with you. Increase our relationship with each other. Let us see that power shown up with strength and great ability. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Now, would you just stand to your feet just for a moment? I feel encouraged today to know that there are a few people in this room who want to increase their relationship with Jesus. If there's anyone in this room who desires an increased relationship with Christ Jesus, I ask you to come down right now and just stand over here on my left, your right. If you're desiring to increase your relationship with Jesus, just come over here. is no indictment upon whether you are saved or not but this is a truth that we all need to get to now also and I know there may be some over here who, are, who could come over here on my right when I ask this question but if there's anyone who is desiring healing of any sort if you're able would you just come over here on my right your left anyone you desire healing of the Lord Jesus. Bless you. God bless you. Just right over here. God bless you. He sees you. It's all right. He's got you. He's got you. He's got you. Bishop Jenkins, will you come help me, please? God's doing something right now. God's doing something right now. Now just bear with me, you guys, for a moment. Jesus said that his will is for you. That he has a plan for your life.
And it's not just a plan for you to be some goody goody Christian. It is his plan to see the fulfillment of his plan for your life. You know how it happens more? It's when we just open our hearts to have a relationship with him. The relationship goes beyond us always doing everything right. It's like it's like a good friend who just loves you even when you screw up. He's doing that with you right now. So I'm going to pray with you for an increased relationship. Father, in Jesus' name, each one of these amazing people who have given their heart to you in one way or another before. But Lord, the cares of this world, the issues that happen in our lives make us feel cold and, and, and feel like you're not even there sometimes. But this day, we're making a decision post-resurrection to have a relationship with you. As they came and they stood, they stand, they're standing forward with you now, I ask for this move to take place upon them. Now I'm just going to ask you to repeat this prayer after me as you agree with it. Father God, Father God by an act of my own will, by an act of my own will, I make a decision. I make a decision to walk with you. To walk with you. Thank you. Thank you. That you hung. That you hung. Bled. Bled. And died. And died for me. For me. Thank you. Thank you. That you were resurrected. That you were resurrected for me. For me. Now, now I open my heart. I open my heart. To full relationship with you. To full relationship. I submit my life to you. I submit my heart to you. You my best friend. And I open that relationship up more with you. rejoices that they do come because you have power to heal and to change and to deliver. So Father, as prayers are offered as hands are laid upon these people this morning, I pray that your healing power would touch the lives of these that have come. Father, effect the healing and the cure. Remove the disc from the disease this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. To him and to him alone be all praise, glory, and honor for the work that's done here at this altar now. We thank you, Lord, for it in Christ's name. In Christ's name. Father, bless your people with healing virtue and healing power. Holy Spirit, communicate that power to their lives. Let it flow into their bodies top of their head down to the tip of their soul. Father, let every malignancy, let everything that's abnormal in their bodies, let it be destroyed, let everything be set right. Let minds that are confused come to peace. Or there, if there are those that struggle with addictions of any kind, Father, let the power of those addictions be broken over their life this morning. Let freedom, the freedom that you rose from the grave to bring, let it be manifested in the lives of the people in this house this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We just begin to give you honor for that which you're doing. If you believe that the Lord is touching your life this morning, just begin to thank him for his touch. To worship you. Just begin to bless his name. Lord, we bless you that you're here, you're among us. You're moving in this house this morning. You're responding to the needs of your people. 
You're touching lives this morning. You're healing disease. You're setting captives free. You're losing confusion. Oh, how we bless you, Lord. How we glorify your name. How we magnify your name this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yes to your touch. We thank you, Lord, that our lives will never be the same. We are eternally and forever changed by you this morning. Consider it done now in Jesus. The completion of his will. Post resurrection we walk in his strength and his power. In Jesus' name. Can you give God a hand of praise for us?